welcome to Grizzly Tales for Gruesome Kids. A series of cautionary tales for lovers of squeam. I call this tale, Silence is Golden. There is a misconception among school children that librarians are timid little mice, only good for bullying. Wrong! You obviously haven't met Dolly and Dot. Sweet on the outside, but inside as twisted as a Welkwinkler's knife. <laughs> They worked in a school in Colchester where the children were so noisy that a herd of flat-footed elephants could have danced past the building and nobody would have heard them. The cause of this noise was a girl called Dolores Bellicone. She had a voice so loud she could stop a pack of hungry year nines at 20 paces. Don't even think about eating my sweets! This meant that the other children had to shout over her to be heard. Pass the ketchup! Oi, those were my... Pass the ketchup! What did you say? Those were my chip. Pass the ketchup! I can't hear you! Pass the ketchup! Not you, him! What did you say? Catch up! There's no need to shout. But there was. Dolores loved shouting. It meant that everyone had to stop talking and listen to her. So, Dolores, we're trying to read. Did I tell you what a weird journey I had in on the bus this morning? <laughs> Let's just pause a moment to consider why she had to be silenced. A library is a quiet place where silence reigns so that pupils can read. It's not that hard to understand, is it? So, I was on the bus, right? Shouting into the ear of this selfish old man who was sitting in my seat. Get up, Grandad, I yelled. Give up your seat for a lady. Dolores, please. And when he wouldn't, I screamed till he did, like this. Ah! Dolores. But get this, my scream smashed the windscreen and we crashed into a herd of elephants dancing down the street. I saw the elephants too. Children. Me too. And me. And me. Will everyone stop shouting? It wasn't me who started it! Not me, neither! Doesn't anyone want to hear what happened after the crash? Quiet! Quiet yourself! You two make more noise than the rest of us put together! <laughs> hey, let's put the lights out! Then it's more like reading in bed! There is only so far you can push a librarian. But on this particular occasion, Dolly and Dot had been pushed beyond the point of no revenge. Oh, Dolly, said Dot. Oh, Dot, said Dolly. Why won't they listen to us? Because they can't hear what we're saying over Dolores, dear. We need to shut her up for good. Oh, Dot, I've just had an idea. Why don't we break her into bits and file her away under T for tongue and F for foot? No, 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 even better. Nobody ever goes into the ancient history section. We could file all of her in there. Not sure that's such a good idea, Dolly, dear. I think the police might want a word. Oh, yes, we wouldn't want to do anything illegal. No, dear, what we need is the help of an alchemist. An alchemist? A wizard who can turn things into gold. Gold? Gosh, why? Because silence is golden. Oh, very good.
They looked up alchemist in the yellow gold pages and found a Dr. Calf. Bring her to my laboratory and I'll do what's necessary, he said when the librarians had explained their problem. Anything else? Well, yes. What shall we do with her once we've turned her into gold? We could always melt her down into a necklace. You know, Dolly, there's a cruel streak to you that I've never noticed before. I like it. We could always sell her. Oh, and make some money out of her. Yes, yes, we could fund a little silence project for the library. I'll have a word with some museum people I know in Mexico. We can flog her off as an old Aztec statue. Good day. The librarians, however, still had a major problem. How are we going to get Dolores to Dr. Carve's laboratory without her suspecting anything? On the bus? Well, we do both have free passes, dear. It was a splendid idea. So after school, Dolly and Doc steered Dolores away from her friends. Bye, everyone! With the help of an unattended wheelchair. There you are, dear. Are you two kidnapping me? Shh! Don't be silly, dear. Dolly and Dot, the Dowager Desperados. Doesn't sound quite right, does it? Because if you are, I shall scream! Please, not again, begged the driver. I am still peering through an elephant's tutu from this morning. No, dear, no. We're taking you to see a doctor friend of ours to measure the loudness of that pretty little voice of yours. Why? Because we think you should be in the Guinness World of Records. The Guinness World of Records? But I'll be famous! Yes, so we don't want you wasting your voice by screaming now. Understood? Good girl, said Dolly, flashing a sinister smile. But once inside Dr. Calf's laboratory, Dolores said remarkably little, except for an ooh and an ow and one final uh. Later that night, a wooden box was loaded onto a tractor and driven to the coast, where a merchant ship bound for Mexico City was waiting to depart. And there it should have ended, had the merchant ship not been hijacked by a band of cutthroat pirates who, in transferring the golden statue to their ship, accidentally let it fall into the water. Whoops, me hearties. Butterfingers. Where Dolores Bellicose sank like a silent stone. She's still there today, on the bottom of the ocean, where even if she could shout for help at the top of her loudest voice, nobody would ever hear her. <laughs> and that school in Colchester? See how the library's changed? Excuse me, miss, but where will I find Marcel Proust? Shh! I must say, Dolly, this new silence project really seems to be working. Isn't it lovely and quiet, dear? Caviar? So if you still think librarians are timid little mice, <laughs> think again! <laughs>